Now, the last I checked, you were still unable to trade Terra Luna on all of the centralized exchanges, but more and more and more centralized exchanges are going to be out there and embracing and accommodating for Terra Luna 2.0. So it does seem as though if you were holding Terra Luna and it is currently suspended, you will be receiving the airdrop for your Terra Luna 2.0. But in this video, I want to go over a summary of the results as to why UST and Terra Luna failed in in the first place why it can't why it became depegged and why luna and ust just death spiraled out of control and the price fell off a cliff because i think this is important especially if you were planning on investing in terra luna 2.0 as opposed to just holding terra luna classic at this point and this is coming directly from a retweet from do kwan and they've got the full article which i will link or link in the description below if you guys want to read the whole thing it i mean it's about a 20 30 minute read depending on how in depth you want to get into it it. But we're going to go over the summaries in this video, and if it sounds like something you're interested in, let's get started. What's up, everybody? I'm Clay. I'm here to make 2022 the best year ever. If you haven't clicked that subscribe button, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Join us. Become a bro. We are here every single day, and we are growing our portfolios together. And look, if you're brand new to investing, you don't know how or where to buy stocks and crypto, get a link in the description below for Weeble. Super simple to set up your account. Any deposit gets you guys six free stocks right now. Best promo they got going on. It is their anniversary edition, so make sure to check it, take advantage of that. And if you guys do want to get Luna Classic or Luna Terra 2.0, you guys can get that on Voyager. You're going to get $25 in free Bitcoin just for signing up. So make sure to check that out as well. But let's let's jump right into this. So I'm going to link this article down in the description below if you guys do want to check it out and read it for yourselves. But we are going to be going over the summary of the results. And then we're kind of, let's just talk a little bit about what this means for Terra Luna 2.0 and, and whether or not they're really going to be able to, I guess, drive that project into the future and allow it to grow. So this is a summary of the results and it says our on-chain investigation revealed that a small number of players identified vulnerabilities early into the UST DPEG, specifically in the relatively shallow liquidity of the curve pools, securing Terra Luna or Terra USD USTs pegged to other stable coins and moved to, to exploit these by. And it's giving us four different ways that they move to exploit these. So it, that's a mouthful for anybody to understand right off the bat. That is a mouthful. And you're going to get that from, from programmers and developers. They got to use big words. They're used to it. Smart guys out there programming all of this stuff. But in a nutshell, it basically, I mean, you can take that last sentence there. They, um, they, they identified vulnerabilities and they pounced. Here's the thing. They weren't vulnerabilities in, you know, anything other than, than what the Terra Luna US team created. And I'm going to tell you right now, it, whether you're that kind of person or not, I my mind definitely goes there, vulnerabilities should be exploited. They absolutely should be exploited. Why? Because they take you to the next level. If you can exploit a vulner vulnerability now and somebody sees where that hole or where that crack is, you have a choice to make. Now, it can destroy the entire thing. You can just knock that crack and knock that crack until the entire building crumbles, or you can patch that crack, you can fix it, and, and you can make it whole again. Now, these guys did nothing wrong by exploiting these vulnerabilities. They were there, and they took advantage of them. So the four ways that they did so, withdrawing UST funds from the Anchor Protocol on Terra, and then by bridging these funds from Terra to Ethereum via a wormhole infrastructure, and there's a lot of words in here if you guys aren't like specifically, uh, I, I guess, into crypto or, or really far into crypto. What's a wormhole? What is you know all of these different things? Basically, you know, a wrapped coin or a different contract address taking your your coins out of one place and depositing them into another or using another blockchain to kind of arbitrage differences. And I know arbitrage is a very big word there. It's going to come into handy in a second here. It basically means the exploiting of the differences. Think about it. If, if, if a stock or something is trading at a certain price on the U.S. exchange, and maybe it's trading at a slightly different price, or arbitraging in high-frequency trading. Let's use that example. 
If a stock is trading at you know a dollar and a penny, and I can get it for a dollar by arbitraging the difference in speed. If I can go out there and I can pick up that stock for a dollar because I have an advantage over you, and I buy it for a dollar and sell it to you for a dollar and a penny all day long, I'm going to arbitrage that difference there, and I'm going to take advantage of it, and I'm going to make a penny. But if I make a penny, you know, a hundred million times, I've got a million dollars to worry about. So the third thing they did was swapping significant amounts of UST to other stable coins in curves liquidity pools and a liquidity pool is basically anybody that is is you know depositing those funds to provide liquidity for other people that are buying and selling the Terra Luna or Terra UST and finally the fourth fourth thing during the depegging process likely arbitraging insufficiencies between various pricing sources curve decentralized exchanges and centralized exchanges by buying and selling positions between centralized exchanges and decentralized markets and we got a little summary sentence here but that's where the arbitraging comes in if i can buy terra luna or if i can buy ust on on exchange a we're not going to use any i mean we're not going to use any legitimate named centralized exchanges here because i don't want to bring anybody down or anything like that but if i can buy terra luna ust or if i can buy terra luna or if i can buy ust on a certain exchange for 90 cents and I know it's selling on another exchange for 95 cents, I'm arbitraging the difference. I'm taking it off exchange A, and I'm selling it on exchange B for 5 cents more than I just bought it for. Guys, anybody in their right mind would do that. It's not illegal to do. And of course, you know, it did expose a lot of insufficiencies and a lot of vulnerabilities in what the Terra Luna UST or Terra Luna team was building there. But it's not wrong to exploit those differences all day. Think about it. You know, if you can go to a garage sale and you can buy a deck of PSA 10 Pokemon cards for a hundred bucks, and then you can go to, you know, I don't know, you just say eBay. Then you can go to eBay and you can sell those deck of PSA 10 Pokemon cards for a hundred thousand dollars. You're going to do that all day long. That's arbitraging the difference in two markets. You're buying in one market satisfying the price, the satisfying the demand and supply there, and you're taking it to another market and selling it there. It is literally any goods and services. I mean, I don't care what example you think. If you take, if you look at manufacturing costs in a different country and see that they are willing to work for less and you're bringing it here to the U.S. to sell for more, that's arbitraging the difference in labor. There is so much arbitrage that goes on every day and it's not necessarily a, a bad thing, but it, it did cause a very bad thing for UST here. So as such, we refute the popular narrative of one attacker or hacker working to destabilize UST. The DPEG of UST could have instead resulted from the investment decisions of several well-funded entities, example to abide by risk management constraints or alternatively to reduce UST allocations deposited into Anchor in the context of turbulent macroeconomic and microeconomic conditions, blah, 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 all of that good stuff. Guys, it, what they're saying here is this was not an attack by one person. It could have been intentional. It could have been intentional arbitrage that drew the price down and really spiraled this thing out of control. But it does leave us with a couple questions about Terra Luna, Terra Luna Classic, Terra Luna 2.0, and this new you know blockchain that is going to be formed here. Will the same insufficiencies, will the same vulnerabilities exist? I know they're getting rid of UST. They are no longer working on stabilizing that coin. But it's the same developers, it's the same ideas, and it's the same team running it. Will there be the same problems? So it, it does lead to a little bit of concern if you are considering investing in Terra Luna 2.0. But I want to know what you guys think. Down in the comments below, what do you think about this summary that they came up with? It is being, I guess, promoted by Do Kwan out there. And whether or not you guys are going to invest in Terra Luna 2.0 based on that. Let us know in the comments below. If this button right here is still red, make sure to click it. Subscribe to the channel. Join us. Become a bro. We are here every single day. And we are growing our portfolios together. Claybro883 on Twitter and Instagram. We will buy at Crypto.com Voyager. And until the next time, hope that each and every one of you have an awesome day.